Good afternoon and a welcome to Spartan Stadium, home of the LCC Thunderbirds. They are taking on the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Kelsey Beimer. Kelsey, we have a great matchup tonight against two rival NWC teams, very familiar with each other from LCC's last stint in the conference. They kind of get to renew that rivalry here this afternoon. We sure do. And yeah, on both ends of the, both teams here have a couple things with their roster. So uh, Delphus Jefferson's starting quarterback, Carter Agner, he's not starting today. And also for the LCC Thunderbirds and Matthew Quatman's not playing today. So a couple big pieces are not playing today. Yeah, so we have, we'll see uh, how both teams are able to adjust. As you mentioned, Delphus Jefferson without their starting quarterback, Carter Agner, he actually has a pec strain. It'll keep him from being able to get under center, but he is going to start on defense, so that'll be interesting to see if that um, hampers him at all on defense. And here, right out of the gate, Michael Quatman takes this one across the 50-yard line all the way into Wildcat territory as the Thunderbirds will have great field position for their first possession. Yeah, that was great by Michael Quatman there. He got the ball straight up the field, got him in great starting field position for the Thunderbirds. So here comes the Thunderbird offense. As you mentioned, Matthew Quatman not able to go, has an injury, kept him pretty limited last week against Bluffton. And this week, Coach Palti deciding it's probably best just to let him rest as uh, they don't want to risk losing him for any more amount of time. Brady Parker going to keep this one himself, going to move this one up, and that is going to be what looks like it will be enough for at least Famous Recipe Chicken. First downs, first one of the game for LCC. Nothing too fancy there, Kelsey. Just a little bit of an option read. Parker decided to keep it himself and picks up an easy first down. Exactly, yep. Had Quatman going over to the right, had a couple of the defenders follow him over, gave uh, Brady Parker some space to grab the first down there. Parker being joined in the backfield by Eddie White. This one is going to go to him as he's going to work off the right side. One of Coach Palti's keys to the game that he sent us was to control the line of scrimmage, and LCC is really doing a fantastic job of that so far. They're not having any issues getting uh, yards after the carry there. Yeah, a nice hole there for White. White, a six foot, 198 freshman, as he drew his first start today in the absence of Matthew Quatman. Get a, they'll be able to get a good look out of him, and if they're able to get something out of him, it's a nice little wrinkle. This time it's going to be Parker going to call, call his own number yet again right up the middle. Uh, not, he'll be taken down, but not before he picks up another least famous recipe chicken first down, and the Thunderbirds are in the thermal guard window and door red zone. Yeah, and seeing Brady Parker run here will be something we'll probably see a lot today. He has 47 attempts on the season, 290 yards with 6.2 average, just running and three touchdowns. So to see him with work here will not be surprising. And it looks like we got an injured Wildcat down after that play. So we'll step aside where they treat him, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Kellen Brotherwood with the injured running, or excuse me, the Wildcat on that play. He's able to walk off the field under his own power, so that's good to see. He's a big part of this Wildcat team, both defensively and offensively, so definitely don't want to risk losing him as... Brady Parker come back out, and he looks like he's got a little bit of a limp to him. It, he did take a hard shot as he went up to the middle. And we'll have to keep an eye on that, see if that slows him down at all. Parker going to hand this one off to White. White works off the left side, falls a couple of blockers before he's met by a couple of different Delphus Jefferson defenders, and they drive him back but not before he was able to pick up about five yards on that play. Yeah, that was a great job by the Jefferson defense there. There was a host of them there, but I definitely saw Carter Agner and Dean Trentman were there on the tackles. Yeah, we started talking about Carter Agner. It'll be interesting to see, you know, that peck strain, you know, obviously being the quarterback really would hinder his ability to throw, which is why he's not playing quarterback tonight. Right. But, you know, if you're playing with an injury at any point, it, it can limit you potentially, and they're going to need him to stay defense. They're going to hand this one off. This one's going to get moved to the right side as this is going to be number two, Michael Quatman. So, actually, I had the numbers wrong. Uh, on that kick return, it was number one, uh, Lousen Flores. Yep. Flores is actually the one that that brought that one back, not Michael Quatman. Michael Quatman's number two. He had that carry. Yep, and that was a Luke Rohde there on the tackle for Jefferson. He has 39 tackles on the season, one tackle for a loss, and two interceptions. So he'll probably be a name we're calling a lot this afternoon. 
So that's going to be a loss on the play for the Thunderbirds. They are going to be third and ten. Ball on the 15-yard line. Parker waits in the shotgun. Going to send the man in motion. Going to take the snap. Going to pull it back. Going to call his own number. Works off the right side. And he loses his footing. He goes down after a short gain. And it will be decision time for Coach Palti. It will, yeah. They're pretty close to the line there. I know Matthew Quatman's usually their kicker. So, um, see, it looks like they might be going for it here, which I can't say I'm too surprised about. So, Flores coming into the game for LCC. And, I, again, it looked like Brady Parker got up a little bit tender that time. It did. So, hopefully he's going to be okay. We'll see what they dial up here on this fourth down play. Eddie White in the backfield. Parker going to take the snap, going to go to the air. Throws it across the middle, an easy pitch and catch as LCC gets on the scoreboard first as they have a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Yep, that was Mylon Callens. That's his third touchdown on the season. Senior 6'0", 175 pounds. He's been really good for the Thunderbirds this year. And Mylon Cowan, one of the best receivers in the entire conference. Yet again, getting it done for LCC. And a nice job by Parker. Not trying to do anything too fancy. Cowan runs a great route to the inside. Parker finds him in step. LCC on top six. Nothing pending this extra point. Kicking duties tonight are going to be handled by Brevin Stolle. The sophomore gets that one up and in. LCC on top, 7-0. We're going to step aside. When we return, Delphus Jefferson gets the ball. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, installation, and more. I'd also like to thank tonight's Red Zone sponsor, Thermal Guard Window and Door. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermalguardwindows.com or call 419-229-4273 for your free estimate. LCC struck first as they are on top, 7 nothing, And, Kelsey, they moved the ball pretty easily. There wasn't a whole lot that they weren't able to do. Delphus did force them into a fourth down, and it was fourth and seven. LCC went to the air for the first time tonight, and they came away with an easy touchdown to Milan Cowens. They sure did. Yeah, they had good positioning off that kickoff return, but like you said, not too hard for them to go up the field and grab seven points there. Just a little... Squib kick into the air that time, and great placement as that kind of fell into no man's land. Jefferson had to hurry to cover that one up. So now Delphus Jefferson is going to come out to the field, going to be led by quarterback Luke Rohde. is going to be his first start of the season, and it'll be interesting to see what Coach Pullman decides to do with this offense, if they're going to keep the playbook open like they would if uh, Agner was back there or if they try to uh, decide to try to simplify some things for him. Right, yeah. Luke Rohde definitely doesn't have as much stats as Carter does, obviously, being the backup. He's 9 for 27 on the season, 110 yards, one interception. So, And we're going to have an early jump, as that is going to be number 73, Jaden Williams. Just got a little bit too excited that time. It looks like he was trying to time the snap. Uh, he's going to draw the offsides penalty. So a fortunate play for Delphus Jefferson to get things started. They're going to have first and five coming up. Rody's going to be joined in the backfield. I believe that is Dean Trentman. Trentman going to take that one, and he's going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage, maybe even lost a yard as the T-Birds come up with the football. They were trying to say fumble, but I believe his forward momentum had been stopped. Yeah, the LCC uh, defensive line did a good job there. I always love giving these guys a shout-out. Avi Sorrells, J.J. Snyders, Lewis Knotts, Jaden Williams, and Gianni McKee. They do a really fantastic job of not letting uh, – the runners get uh, too many extra yards there. So going to bring up a second and five as they did uh, get him back up to the line of scrimmage. Trentman switch sides. Rody takes a snap. Going to look to air this one out. Tries to throw on the crossing route. Great job as that was Carter 
Was that Carter Agner? That was. It is Carter Agner. So not able to throw the ball today, but still out there trying to make highlight plays. He gets the catches. You could hear the surprise of my voice. I didn't expect to see him out there on offense, and he's immediately calling that he needs to be checked out. You wonder if maybe reaching was just a little bit too much for him as he looked like he might have been in some pain. But a great snag that time. Not a lot on that pickup, but we did have a flag. And that is going to go on LCC. So another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, a first down. This is going to be the first one for the Wildcats as the six are going to move and as they get right around midfield. Yeah, LCC has 25 penalties on the season for 215 yards. Already two in this game so far on uh, Je Jefferson's first possession. So that's definitely something they're going to want to get control of and Coach is going to talk to them too about, I'm sure. So we'll see if Jefferson can take advantage of the miscues by the Thunderbirds. This one's going to be tossed out to Trapman, and a great job reading that one as number eight, Carson Hefner, just came flying in to get that one stopped in the backfield. Yeah, that's Dean Trapman, sophomore, 5'10", 185 pounds. He has 47 attempts on the season, 178 yards, and about four yards average per carry. That leaves them with second and long here. 7.25 left to go here in the opening quarter. Rody takes the snap. Going to get rid of this one quickly. They're trying to go to the outside. Able to pick up about six on that one as that pass was completed to Parker Shade. Nice play drawn up that time by the Wildcats. Not trying to ask too much of Rody. Just wanting to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Yeah, and I, I think that's good for them now. Just get him throwing the balls, get a couple completions under his belt, build his confidence a bit. And I have to give a shout-out. Great um, defense there by Carson Hefner and Michael Plotman on the tackle. So third and nine for the Wildcats. Rody going to go to the air one more time. Decides to throw. He has a man wide open. Great job. He's able to break a tackle before being taken down on the 30-yard line. And his number 12, Kellen Brotherwood, the sophomore wide receiver, found the soft spot in that Underbird defense took full advantage of it. Great job by Luke Rohde to get that pass completed. Yeah, that was a great, great pass, Nate. Luke did a great job of getting the ball right where it needed to be. Had it have been just maybe a yard forward, Xavier Pinnell had the interception there. So that was really a great pass. Got it right where it needed to be for the receiver to catch it and grab a couple more yards after the catch. Wildcats are on the move. They have another lead, same as Recipe Chicken, first down. Rohde on the move, goes the throw. This one's going to be intercepted. Michael Quatman looking for some space as he returns this one out to the 41-yard line. Great job by Michael Quatman. As you can tell from up here, we had a great vantage point of that. He read that the entire way. He saw Luke Rohde stepping up and a nice job of waiting and kind of baiting Rohde into throwing that one before he stepped in front of it for a big interception. He sure did. That was a really great play, and I, I always – Never like to think Caster Curse is real, but I'm sorry, Luke. I think I might have just got you there on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but great play by Michael Quatman there. So the Wildcats offensive drive stymied with the turnover. LCC comes out for their second possession. Parker going to take the snap. Hands this one off to White. White working up off the left side. He's going to get taken down after a pickup of about four. Great tackle there by Brady Miller. And actually, that is not Brady Parker that is out there. That is number 15, Brady Jacobs. So we mentioned that it looked like Parker was walking around kind of timid, and we can see he's getting worked on over here on the sidelines. So Brady Parker in, or excuse me, Brady Jacobs, the freshman, he is in at quarterback. And we'll see what kind of dynamic that changes here for LCC. Jacob takes a snap, going to hand this one off to White. He's going to go to the other side this time, works through the line as they were able to find some plenty of room that time, and they get that one out near the first down marker. It looks like they're going to be about a half a yard short. You know, Kelsey, that backfield now for LCC, that is two freshmen. That, Brady Jacobs, a freshman, handing it off to the freshman, Eddie White. I, you got to imagine Coach Palti did not envision that backfield at this point into the season for LCC. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, both, like I said earlier, both teams here have injuries, people out, so it'll be interesting to see what these young guys can come out and do. White going to try for the third straight time. He gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. He's going to be dropped for no gain. That's going to bring up fourth and short. 
And we'll see what Coach Palti wants to do. You know, we talked about the kicker is Matthew Quatman. Um, Brady Parker is the punter. And so with him out, yeah, at fourth and short around midfield, you'd imagine they'd probably feel pretty comfortable going for this one anyway. Yeah. But that will be something to watch depending on what's going on with Parker. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. Like you said, both punter and kicker have some injuries on the sidelines. So looks like they're going to go for this one. Jacobs waits for the snap. Going to hand this one off. White going to fight, get some tough yardage. It doesn't pick up a lot, but that is enough to give them a first down. As Eddie White picks up the least famous recipe chicken at first down, and the drive will continue for LCC. Yep, and that's all you need from freshman Eddie White. This is only his second game he's played this year. He has seven attempts, 42 yards on the season. He's doing a good job so far, getting them what they need, and uh, they're moving the chains now, so LCC is still continuing their drive. So Brady Parker, you can see on the sideline, he's up moving around, but he's not moving around real great, but his helmet is on, and he's snapping it up. He's trying to run it out. White going to take this one. Going to pick up about two on the carry as Brady Jacobs has yet to go to the air. And here comes Brady Parker back into the game. A great sight for the LCC faithful. And it looks like we're going to have another injured Wildcat. And actually, it looks like it's going to be Kellen Brotherwood yet again yep. having some difficulty standing up. So we're going to step aside while they take care of him. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's first downs are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your caring needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Kellen Brotherwood able to walk off the field, so hopefully we'll see him back. He, not sure if we're dealing with cramping or what was going on with Kellen, but hopefully he'll be okay. Brady Parker back into the game, immediately going to air this one out right up the seam as that is number 30. Caden Falky, Falky just left all alone as he ran up the middle of the field. And Parker does a nice job of finding him for another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Yeah, Caden did a great job there. He was wide open in the field. And Brady Parker, I was wondering if they'd come out and throw it with him being on the sideline a little bit injured. But he did a great job, put the pass right where it needed to be and was able to give Caden Falky a great pass to get a good, a good uh, advantage up the field. So first and 10 from the 28-yard line. See Flores coming to the near side. Three wide receivers, Flores in motion. Parker gonna throw yet again. This one across the center again. Great defensive play as number two, Jace Lindemann stuck his hand in there at the last moment to knock that one away. There for a moment, it looked like Mylon Cowan was going to have his second touchdown. Yep, I was getting ready to say it. That's touchdown number two for Mylon Cowan. But no, Jace Lindemann did a fantastic job defending there. Was right on Mylon. Was able to get a hand on that ball and save a touchdown. 3.04 left to go here in the opening quarter. Second and 10 for the Thunderbirds on the Wildcat 28-yard line. So far, the LCC offense has had plenty of success moving the football. The Wildcat defense trying to find an answer. Floor is in motion. Parker going to call his own number right up the middle. Not moving real great, but effective enough as he picks up about seven or eight on that carry. They'll bring up third and short for LCC. Great tackle there for Jefferson. That's Brady Miller and Lucas Millmine sharing it there. Coach Palti. Looking at his sheet, calling in the offensive plays. See all the Thunderbirds going to the wristband, trying to make sure that they are all on the same page. White in the backfield along with Parker. Parker going to take this one off the right side, back towards the middle of the field, and this one is fumbled as I think LCC was able to get this one back as Donovan McKee or I'm sorry, Gianni McKee, he gets that one. So a fortunate bounce for LCC as Parker had coughed the football up after the hit. But with the recovery, it would say another Lee Samuel Trespe chicken first down for LCC, and they are inside the Thermal Guard window and door red zone. Yeah, the snap on that last play there was low, so I don't know if that's what threw uh, Brady off. He just took it off and ran. Fortunately, had that fumble, but thankfully they were able to recover it. 
Parker going to hand this one off to White. White breaks one tackle, and he just goes right into the teeth of that Wildcat defense. And he is going to be stopped after a pickup of about three. White having to get some of those tough yards here in this first quarter. Yeah, and that was Sam Hassing there. He almost had him tackled in the backfield. But I also just wanted to give a shout-out to Chris uh, Krinovich for uh, LCC. He did such a good job blocking there. I could see him. The play was about over, but he just kept going. It's a really good effort by Chris. Flores goes in motion yet again. Going to hand this one off to him this time. Cuts back up to the inside, and he gets into the end zone for a, another Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Yeah, and that was a great job by Lawson Flores there, his second touchdown of the season. And, yeah, LCC was driving. Didn't seem to have too much trouble there, did they, Nate? Not at all. all right, whether it's going into the air, whether it's keeping it on the ground, this Thunder, Thunderbird offense is looking really good. And it's got to be a good feeling for the team, for the coaching staff, for everybody, after being shut out last week against Bluffton. Absolutely. Brevin Stolle in for the extra point. Kick is up, and... It is good. LCC has a 14-0 lead on Delphus Jefferson. A minute 13 left to go here in the opening quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's touchdown sponsor is Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, installation, and more. LCC forced an interception on defense, and they made that turnover stand up as they were able to go down and score to make this a 14-0 game still here in the first quarter. As the kickoff gets sent, Jefferson looking to see if they can't get some good field position. Cuts it back up, and they're going to be dropped, I believe, right around the 30-yard line. We'll see where the official mark is, as that is going to be on the 29. That was Lucas Millmine on the return there. And we have to talk about Brevin Stahl a little bit. He's a sophomore coming in, taking over all the kicking duties. On the day so far, he's already two for two extra points, has had two good kickoffs. So I think LCC is looking pretty good at the kicking position once Matthew Quatman graduates this year. Yeah, and well, it's, it's got to be good for Coach Paul. As much as you don't want anybody to be injured, it's also good to know, though, that you have somebody else, especially, um, you know, if Matthew's not 100%, but you can still play, well, yeah. you know, now we're not putting extra strain on the kicking game and things like that because we have faith that Brevin Stolle is able to be able to get those up. As I believe we're going to have a timeout. So, I can't see who took that. Me either. But either way, it's gonna, it looks like a timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play in your financial future. Call 419 225 6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Not still not real sure who called that timeout. Uh, is it still? It was Delphus Jefferson. We got some help here in the uh, press box. So Delphus Jefferson calls the timeout. Minute seven left to go here in the opening quarter. As Rody going to keep this one himself. Going to carry off the right side. He's going to get taken down hard, right around the line of scrimmage. Actually, looks like they're going to mark him down for about a two-yard loss, and I just got a, an update um, from Delphus Jefferson. Carter Agner is done for the day. Uh, it looks like he may have uh, kind of exasperated that injury that he had, and so he is not going to be able to play this game on either side of the, f of the ball, and that is a big loss for the Wildcats. Really big, yeah. Offensively and defensively, he was a huge part of that Jefferson team. Little screen. This one's going to get dumped off to Trentman, but nowhere to go. LCC does a nice job of gathering him in, and that's going to be another loss. So right now, the Wildcats going the wrong way. Yep, three Thunderbirds there on the tackle doing a really great job. Like you said, yeah, Delphus Jefferson's going backwards, but we'll see if they can do something here and continue their drive. They're down in 16 for the Wildcats. 
And before they get that snap off, though, the first quarter is going to come to an end. LCC in control. They're on top 14-0. We'll step aside and be back for the second quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back tonight's scoreboard sponsors, Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Second quarter just about to get underway here at Spartan Stadium. Delphus Jefferson looking at a third and long. Rody going to drop back, looks to get rid of it, going to throw deep, has a man on the far sideline, but just a little bit too much on that one as Jace Lindemann was the targeted receiver. Yep, he was targeted there. I can understand the quarterback. He threw it a little bit forward to not get that one intercepted. Unfortunately, it was just out of reach of Jace there. And, you know, Delphus Jefferson has had some decent looks. Um, Lindemann was open there, just a little bit off. And you got to maybe chalk some of this up to this is Luke Rohde's first start this season. You know, he's still getting used to this offense. Yeah, and now with the news that uh, Carter Agner not going to be back in this game, you know, Delphus Jefferson is going to have to try to find a, a spark somewhere. This punt is a little bit wobbly as it isn't going to go too far as LCC is going to have great field position to start their third drive. Yeah, and I think his jersey is a little bit scrunched, but that was Luke Rohde on the punt there, which we go back. I think their typical punter is Kellen Brotherwood, and we've seen him come off the field a couple times injured today, so that could be another Another yeah, actually, place there. as you say that, looking across the field, I think that's Kellen Brotherwood on the bench right now. So he's obviously dealing with a few things that he and the injuries just kind of seem to keep piling up for the Wildcats. They do. Yeah, last time he was out on the field when they had to come out for him, he looked like he was in a little bit of a pain. So hopefully he's okay. So just underway here in the second. Brady Parker had to miss some time early in that first quarter, but he has been back. Going to go to the air. Going to throw this one deep. Cowan all alone. Or no, that's actually Eddie White on the wheel route. And nobody picked him up as he came out of the backfield. As he stopped, made a nice job adjusting to that one in the air and picks up a Lee Simmons recipe chicken first down for LCC. And they are just inside the thermal guard window and door red zone. Yep, like you said, that was Eddie White there. He's doing a great job. Freshman, he's stepping in today at the running back receiving our position behind Matthew Cotman had a great reception there, so he's really doing great and stepping up for the Thunderbirds. Ball on the 19-yard line. Parker going to keep this one himself. Goes right up the middle. Now he bounces it outside, trying to make a couple of guys miss, and he's going to get taken down after about a pickup of seven. That was a really great cut there by Brady Parker. I thought they had him in the middle. He bounced out left and was able to grab a couple more yards. And also a great job by uh, Jefferson, uh, Lucas Milmine, and Nelson Miller there on the tackle. Second and two for LCC as they are driving, looking to open up this game a little bit more. So far, the offense has seemed to just be able to do just about anything they want. The Wildcat defense looking for answers. White dances around, picks up about five, and that's going to be good enough for a Lee Samus recipe chicken first down. It is, yeah. Despite all the injuries that uh, the Thunderbirds are having, they're doing a pretty good job looking to get their third score of the day here. And you got to be happy if you're Coach Palti, too, because now you're getting your depth tested. Yep. And right now they are passing this test with flying colors. Oh, yeah, with flying colors. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. First and goal. Parker waits for the snap. Going to hand this one off. This is Quapman. Quapman into the end zone for another uh, Ricker Lawn and Landscape a touchdown as he sent him into motion. LCC really likes to run that motion. They send someone almost every play, and that's actually how Flores and Michael Quatman were able to get their touchdowns. So something that LCC goes to a lot, and obviously they should because it's working for them. Yeah, right now Jefferson just doesn't have an answer for that play. It doesn't really seem to matter who goes in motion or what yep. side they run it on. It has been an explosive play for the Thunderbirds. Stolle out for the extra point yet again. Snap is back. It's down. Kick is up. And it is good. 21-0. It has been all LCC here in the early going. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back to these touchdowns. We're brought to you by Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization, weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, installation, and more. This kickoff is going to hit the ground, and then it is going to be trying to be gathered up by Aiden Jennings, and it ends up going out of bounds, and that's where Delphus Jefferson will get the ball as they are trying to get some things going on offense. They had some success early. But that last drive really saw them going in the wrong direction. It did, yeah. It will be good for them to see if they can hopefully get something driving or something going here on offense because really they haven't been able to do much yet. So hopefully Jefferson can get something going, and I think that would be really good for their mentality going forward. So Kellen Brotherwood appears to be out of the game. Carter Agner is, is for sure out of this game. Somebody from the Wildcats is going to have to step up. Someone's going to have to want to be that playmaker. Luke Rohde. He is back, and Tretman right behind him. They're going to hand it off to Tretman. Tretman looking for some space, and that D-line from LCC all over that one as they drop Tretman for a loss. Yep, that was Gianni McKee. He has 26 tackles on the season, one sack and one tackle for a loss. So he just got another one there. Really great job by the Thunderbirds. The O-line from Delphus Jefferson. They, they've got to get a better push here. They've got to give Rody or, or Tretman or both just a little bit of time and maybe a little bit of space as well. 9.40 and counting here in the first half. Rody's going to have four wide receivers, three on the near sideline. One-on-one matchup on the outside. Rody going to look to go to the air, but he doesn't have any time at all as he is swallowed up. As that time, LCC only sent... No, they did. It was a four-man front. At first, I thought they only sent three guys. But that was but those guys having all sorts of luck getting into the backfield. A big sack. That's going to bring up third and 19 for Jefferson. They sure are. Yeah, Luke Rohde, he was pretty much surrounded there. I think he knew he was going down, so he kind of just dropped. It was inevitable at that point. So, yeah, LCC is getting through and putting some pressure on, definitely. Rody going to try to go to the air yet again. He's going to be chased down, makes a man miss, going to throw back across his body, decides to pull it down, and he is going to get run out of bounds after a pickup of about maybe three or four. That's going to leave them well shy of the first down mark, and they're going to have to punt. Yep, Lewis Knotts was so close to getting him in the backfield there. Like you said, Luke Rody, he was looking up the field, thought he was going to throw it, probably didn't have the best option there, so he did a good job just to keep it, grab a couple of yards. But unfortunately, that leaves the Wildcats still punting another three and out. LCC running a player on here quickly. As LCC sent some pressure, but Jefferson with a nice punt as Rody got some great distance. And this one is going to roll out of bounds at the Thunderbird 21-yard line. A fantastic punt right around almost probably 55 to 60-yard punt. Yeah. He did a great job to get that one away. Kind of flipped the field. So after having a short field the last time, that LCC had the football this time. They're going a little bit farther to go, and we'll see if that Wildcat defense can come up with a stop. Yeah, that was a really great job by the punter there because Chris Krinovich was inches away from blocking that one. So he got it off, got a good uh, run down the field, like you said, and was able to push LCC back into their own field. Parker going to keep this one himself, going to go to the air. Has his man as Cowan was, or no, that wasn't Cowan. Yes, it was. Yeah, it that was. was Cowan. So Mylon Cowan's had his man beat coming off of that, but that ball was a little underthrown. Cowan had to try to work back. Good defense by Jace Lindemann that time. Going to bring up second and ten. Yeah, Mylon Cowan's is one you're going to want to keep your eye on. He is so speedy. He was right up the field. I mean, I could see it right in the snap exactly where he was going to go. He was wide open, unfortunately for Brady. A little bit underthrown on that one, but it's good to see that Milan's getting that those openings, and hopefully they'll be able to get him on one during this game. Yeah, we've seen a couple of those deep passes from Brady. A little bit off the mark. This time it's going to be white right up the middle, and that is probably a touchdown-saving tackle. 
by number 11, Lucas Milmine. Because Eddie White, he had a lot of green in front of him. He sure did. And what an opening there. The uh, the O-line there, Brady Malcolm, Andrew Baldoff, Chris Grinovich, Don McKee, and Gianni McKee. Wow, they did a great job giving him some room there. Jackson White coming into the game for LCC. As EJ Jones checks out. And we were talking about, just to finish my thought on, on Brady Parker, you know, you wonder, we, we said we saw him kind of walking a little gingerly. He did miss a little bit of time. You wonder if he's having a hard time kind of stepping into those throws. This one looks perfect as he is able to hit Jackson White. And we had said he had just checked into that game. A great job as he got behind the defense and a big reception and a big pickup for LCC. Yeah, he was wide open there. Brady did a good job throwing it downfield. Again, maybe it was a little bit short, but thankfully there was enough space there for uh, him to be able to grab the ball. And Nelson Miller for the Wildcats saved another touchdown there. Yeah, a little bit of air underneath that one for Brady Parker, probably more than he would have liked. Yeah. But either way, big pass completion, another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, a first down for the Thunderbirds, and they are driving yet again. Parker going to throw it yet again. This time he hits in stride, and that is through the arms of Mylon Cowan. A much better ball that time by Brady Parker, and one that Mylon Cowan probably himself will tell you he should have came up with. Yeah, Mylon's going to be disappointed with that one. I thought that was a surefire touchdown, but, you know, those things happen. It's unfortunate. But, wow, these LCC wide receivers, they're getting space, they're wide open, and they're making Brady Parker's job pretty easy on this possession. So that's going to bring up a second and 10 for LCC. Ball on the 26-yard line. 7.39 left to go here in the first half. Parker takes the snap. Going to pull this one back, work through the middle of the field, trying to bounce that one outside, but he's going to get tackled right around the 20-yard line. Bring up third down. That was Luke Rohde there on the tackle. I think LCC is doing a good job with a mix of running and passing, keeping Jefferson guessing what they're going to do. And, I mean, they haven't had any issues driving up the field so far this game. So they're doing a good job. Keep doing what they're doing if you're Scott Palti. Yeah, the offensive line getting a great push, creating space for both Parker and White. This time it's going to be White as he's going to bounce it outside, tries to cut back inside. He's going to get dropped for after a short game, but that's going to be enough for a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. I think Lucas Millmine's going off here. It doesn't look like he's feeling too well on the field, so he's getting subbed off. You can see Kellen Brotherwood working on the sideline as well, trying to get back in this one as the injuries are really starting to pile up here for the Wildcats. LCC inside the thermal guard window and door red zone. Parker checks the wristband. He has a fresh set of downs to work with. Going to throw. Going to swing this one outside. As this one in, ends up in the hands of Caden Falke, he's going to get driven out of bounds after a pickup of about six. Yeah, another good tackle by Luke Rohde there. He has 39 on the season, one tackle for a loss and two interceptions. So he's playing a big part in the game today. We just need to get him going on the offensive side with the quarterback. LCC driving inside the 10-yard line. Second and four. Clock still running, six minutes left to go. Parker going to call this one himself, goes right up the middle as he's going to get taken down right around the three-yard line, and that is going to be another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, a first down. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Parker did, Parker did a really great job of running up the middle there, grabbing a couple yards. Although Blauson Flores was there on the motion, I think if he would have gave it to him, I think he could have been in for a touchdown. So regardless, still a good play. They're just a couple yards from the end zone. White in the backfield next to Parker. Parker's going to hand it off to White. White initially stops short of the end zone. He keeps those feet moving. His offensive line comes in for the extra push, and that is going to get Eddie White into the end zone, and it's another Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Great job by Eddie White there. I think that's his first touchdown of the season, and we have to say four touchdowns for LCC so far, four different players. So they're really doing a great job of getting everyone involved. Like you said, they're testing down their depth chart, getting lots of kids involved, and it's showing. 
Brevin Stolle out to kick another extra point. He's getting a lot of work in this afternoon. He sure his is. first start at kicker. Michael Quatman, the holder. Waits on the snap. Snap is good. Kick is up. And it is good. Brevin Stolle is four for four on extra points here this afternoon. LCC on top big, 28 nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's Red Zone sponsors, Thermal Guard Window and Door. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermalguardwindows.com or call 419-229-4273 for your free estimate. And another kick. It's been effective. They haven't been long, Kelsey. They haven't no. been deep. But they have done a great job of placing them along the sidelines in a spot where I think the returner who is Aiden Jennings is expecting it to go out of bounds, but then it checks up and it hasn't. So then he has to grab it and you can tell a little bit of frustration as he hasn't been getting those clean kickoffs. Exactly. Yeah. Like you said, not long kicks, but he's putting them where they need to be. And I mean, they don't need to be long anyways. LCC defense has been, has been holding Jefferson to absolutely nothing. So I think he's been doing perfect. Like you said, four for four extra points on the day. I'm really impressed with Brevin Stolle stepping in today and his performance so far. Yeah, outside of one drive, every other offensive possession has had negative total yards. But a nice connection here as Rody is able to get this into the hands of Lindemann. As that is going to be a pickup of about eight. You have a great job there. I think at this point they're happy just to get a completion and get moving up the field. So just keep doing that, chipping away. And hopefully they can start making some moves up the field here. Under five left to go here in the half. LCC in control, but Delphus, a little bit of life here early in this drive. Rody takes a snap, going to roll to his right. Going to try to air it out, just lobs it up ahead. He was trying to get into the hands of number 24, Parker Shade, but a little bit too much on that one. This is where things can – I've, I've seen Jefferson a, a few times this year, and I, this is where things can sometimes – start to get a little challenging for them. And that's when they have to move that pocket. Right. And right now with Luke Rohde back there and, you know, making his first start here tonight and the pressure that LCC has been putting on him, moving that pocket brings a whole new set of challenges. And they had a decent play design that time, but you, you got to imagine not being able to stop and set your feet. It, it's difficult for Rohde to be as accurate as he would like. Absolutely. We got a timeout on the field. The Wildcats take their second one of the half. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play in your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Jefferson takes the timeout before a third and three. Rody's going to take the snap. Going to look to get rid of it quickly. And here comes the pressure as he is taken down. As it looked like his first option was taken away from him. And he tried to work back through those progressions. But LCC's defense, they were right on him. And he gets taken down for a big loss as the Wildcats are going to have to punt this one away yet again. Yeah, that was Lewis Notzer, his third sack on the season. And like you said, uh, Luke Rohde was trying to set his feet back there, find a receiver to pass it to. But the O-line just can't keep LCC out of there, not giving him too much time. And yeah, Lewis Notz was back there right away for the sack. So now it's Kellen Brotherwood who's actually back. As you had said, he is the normal punter. He's good enough to come in to punt this one. And this is not a good punt as this one is actually going to work its way oh, wow. back. And it will be – it's been a long time, Kelsey, since I've seen a negative yard punt. And, unfortunately, that's what the Wildcats just had is right now here in this first half, not much going right for Delphus Jefferson. Yeah, things just aren't going their way, unfortunately. I don't know if Isaac Leppert maybe got a hand on that. or if, Yeah, that was just – Yeah, I don't think so. It looked like that one was just one of those ones when Brotherwood went to let that one go. It just kind of hit his foot and put some backspin on it. Yeah. And so it hits off the side of his foot, doesn't go very far, has backspin, 
And unfortunately for the Wildcats, that, that took a bounce. And Brotherwood had to pick that one up just so they didn't lose any more yardage on that punt. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen a punt where uh, the other team ends up on, like, their four-yard line. So a very short field for the Thunderbirds as Brady Parker comes out looking to see if they can't extend this lead yet again. Right up the middle, bounced off the left side. Carter Lester fighting for the yardage. Carter Lester, another talented freshman on this Thunderbird team, getting a carry. Five foot ten, hundred and ninety-two, a absolute stud wrestler that uh, everybody in the area. If you haven't heard of Carter Lester, you I got a feeling you're gonna know who he is by the end of the uh, winter season. Yeah, he about got a touchdown there. That was really impressive. And like you said, LCC's going way down to the jump chart. A lot of uh, Players here, a lot of freshmen, underclassmen getting in, really showing a positive impact. Lester with another carry, works off the right side, and he is in for another Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Five touchdowns, five different players. Great job by Lester there. I'm sure he's happy to come in, grab his first touchdown of the season. We've been saying Brevin Stiley's name an awful lot here in this we first have. half as he trots out yet again for another extra point try. LCC gets everybody ready. Michael Quatman takes the snap, kick is up, and it is good. LCC. Extends the lead to 35 to 0. 310 left to go here in the half. We'll step aside and be back on the USN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Also, like to thank tonight's first down sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So it has been all LCC here in the first half as the offense has been on point and has been able to do pretty much anything that it has wanted here so far. Stolle going to send this one away. It's going to go near the sidelines yet again. This time, Jefferson's going to field it, trying to work through. And I'll tell you what, whether it's special teams, defense, offense, LCC right now excelling in all three phases. Yeah, and I think Jefferson picked up on the uh, Brevin Stahl. I like to kick in that spot because they took Lucas Millmine and switched him, moved him up one row, and uh, they knew that's where he was going to be kicking. So they at least tried to get their kicker turner up there and got decent field position for what they've been working with today, to be honest with you. So this one is going to start on the 27-yard line. 3.06 left to go. As Luke Rohde is going to try to get this offense moving. He's going to go to the air. He has some space. He wants to throw it. He's going to lob that out there to Shade. Shade takes a big hit as this one is going to fall to the ground incomplete. Yeah, and I, I think that was a positive for Luke Rohde there. I mean, he it was a good pass, hit him right there. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to keep hold of it. I think he was surrounded by two or three Thunderbirds there, but at least he was able to have enough time to get a pass off. Jefferson trying to go quickly. They're going to throw this one again. Shade this time holds on to it. A great throw into a very tight window. Shade takes another big hit. But that is going to be a Lee famous recipe chicken first down. Yeah, that was a fantastic throw. I mean, when you talk about threading the needle, that was right where it needed to be for his receiver to catch it. Already going to go to the air yet again, this time to the outside. He was trying to connect with Mill Mine, but too high on that one. As you can see, Jefferson trying to catch LCC off guard here, trying to play this up-tempo as they are going to go back to the huddle here. And no, they're not. They're going to go right back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to keep things going. Trying to see if maybe they can't force a mistake by the Thunderbirds. Oh. And this time the mistake is going to be by the Wildcats as Rody was trying to uh, – it looked like Rody was trying to get the signals and maybe the play out to his teammates and some miscommunication with the center. 2.30 in counting, third and long for the Wildcats. Rody going to go to the air, looking to throw. 
A lot of coverage out there as Michael Quatman tracks that down. That is his second interception of the day. Michael gonna work along that sideline. Had one man to meet, he gets forced out of bounds. Another great return as LCC is gonna get another opportunity to put some points on the board here in the first half. Yeah, great interception there by Michael Quatman. The uh, Luke Rohde had a great pass out there. Obviously, it was just way too long, and that was exactly where uh, Michael Quatman was. So really great job by him. Um, I know he has. That was his fourth interception of the season, so he's no stranger to getting those. Yeah, well, so that means if it's his fourth on the season, he had two coming in. He's able to double that here just in this first half. Yep. Michael Quatman coming up with a big defensive game here so far. Yeah, Michael Quatman, he's really surprised me. I've seen a lot of LCC games this year, but just as being a sophomore, I think he's going to take after his brother's footsteps. I mean, he is really good offense and defense. A great threat for the Thunderbirds. Long pass to going for the home run. As Cowens is able to go up and he collects that one as he falls to the turf. Milan gets the ball inside the thermal guard window and door red zone. And that is a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down for LCC. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about that, Nate. That was just beautiful. I mean, Mylon Cowens, he's finding himself open on almost every play. Great pass by Brady Parker, and they're knocking on the door again for number six. Hey, you know, and, this, and that's what you see out of a lot of offenses, right? You have a big turnover. You have the momentum. It's, hey, let's take that deep shot. LCC executed that one to perfection, and they have the ball on the six-yard line. Carter Lester back in the game for LCC as he is going to take this one. Actually, no, that is not. That is Eddie White as he is fighting off defenders left and right. From where we're at, 23 and 21 look an awful lot alike on the back they of those do. jerseys. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes the jerseys get scrunched up and you can't see her. It's just an awkward angle. But, yeah, and with how many different players for LCC are – putting up numbers today. It's hard to know exactly. <laughs> See the offense looking towards the sideline as the play gets called in. LCC not in any hurry right now. Lots of time still left as they're just under a minute to go in the half. Parker gonna hand this one off. As he gets chopped down at the one yard line, it looks like. As that was awfully close. Eddie White with the carry. Uh, it looked like he was going to walk in easily to yep. the end zone. Dolphus does a nice job of stopping his momentum. And then he's going to bring up third and goal for LCC. Yeah, from our angle here, I thought that he fell into the end zone, but we're at a little bit of diagonal angle here. I'm sure the ref had a much better look at it than us. 20 seconds left to go. LCC not using any of their timeouts. He's coming up to the line. Parker going to carry this one himself. Goes in untouched for another Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Number seven, seven players. Yeah, like you said, Brady Parker was untouched there. Really good job by LCC. And yeah, we, I can't talk well enough about their offense. They're just going I to mean, town. I that's mean, that's an incredible stat. Seven touchdowns, seven different players, all in the first half. Yep. You know, and you have to think that Coach Pulte came into this game and he wanted to make a statement. Right. You know, they lost last week to a Bluffton team that, that was their first NWC loss ever. They had never lost an NWC game um, it, when their previous time in the, in the conference and obviously coming into this season – and then they get shut out. That did not leave a great taste in their mouth. Right. And you have to think that this was an intense week of practice. Coach Palti really hammering on the fundamentals and getting after his guys and lighting a fire underneath them, letting them know that what happened last week wasn't acceptable. That's not what they're used to around here. And at least here in the first half, it looks like that message was received. And whatever he did in practice this week is working. Absolutely. And I apologize. That, that was touch on number six on the day, but still regardless of crazy yeah, stats. Yeah, six and off, six. So. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, you're right. LCC, I think, after last week, they're showing that, you know, that was unacceptable. They're coming out, showing everything that they have. And they'll need it coming up. They have Columbus Grove in a couple of weeks. That will be another tough game for them. But, yeah, um, LCC has to feel really good right now with how they're playing. 
So 12 seconds left to go here in the half. LCC in complete controls there on top, 42 to nothing. Brevin Stolle getting ready to send this one away yet again. Stolle going to kick this one a little bit deeper this time. As this ends up in the hands of Mill Mine, he works around a couple of tacklers. He gets taken down at the 30-yard line. Seven seconds left to go, and you got to imagine Delphi Jefferson just going to kneel on this one, try to get into the locker room and see if they can't regroup. Yeah, I think so. It's unfortunate Lucas Mill Mine hasn't been able to get going on the kick returns here because he has 16 on the season, 289 yards. He actually leads the NWC in kick return yards. So LCC has been doing a good job of keeping him hold at bay there. So, yep, that's what's going to happen. As you can see, Jefferson coming out in formation. They're going to take a knee, and that is going to take us to halftime. It has been all LCC here at Spark Stadium. They're on top 42 to nothing heading into halftime. We'll step aside and be back with the second half here on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. We are underway here in the third quarter. And just a squib kick that LCC recovers. And I mean, you know, we there, you know, you're 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 ready to come back to the broadcast, Kelsey, and you, you want to talk about, you know, things that Delphus Jefferson apparently talked about in the locker room mm -hmm. and hey, you know what, it's a new half. Let's let's start you know, fresh, and and then immediately you have that kind of that pooch kick that we have seen uh, from Brevin Stolle all game. And once again, just kind of falls into no man's land and a nice hustle play by the kickoff return unit for LCC. And they get the ball back here to start the second half. Yeah, that's exact opposite of what you want if you're Adelphus Jefferson. I mean, like you said, new, fresh half. They're getting the ball here. Let's start getting a little bit of momentum going our way. But... LCC, that little pooch kick, they got it, and they're looking for a touchdown number seven on the day. Parker takes the snap, going to hand this one off, and right up the middle. As we've seen a couple of different players back there, so I want to get the right jersey number. That is Eddie White as the starters are still in for LCC. White going to check out, though. Carter Lester coming in for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, Eddie White's doing a really great job. He had only played two games this season, had seven attempts, 42 yards on the season, and he's doing a really good job filling in for Matt Quatman today. You know, it, it, it's pretty impressive right now. You have the rotation. Um, Eddie White, he's just a freshman. We yep. see Carter Lester coming in. He's just a freshman. There are so many talented young players on the Thunderbird team that are getting quality minutes here today. And it's really helping build that depth up, de depth up Excuse me, for LCC. As you see, Lester works off the left side, dances through a couple of arm tackles, takes that one out to the 24-yard line, just short of a first down. Yeah, to continue what you're talking about, Nate, that's exactly what I was thinking. You have your young guys coming in, your backups, and they're putting up a great game. So if anything, if I'm uh, Coach Palti, I'm really excited for the future of this team. They have some good underclassmen who can really perform. So because of the score differential, we are under a running clock here currently. It will stay that way unless the point deficit were to fall below 30. Parker going to hand this one off to Lester. Lester right up the middle, a big hole. Carter Lester into the end zone for a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. That was fantastic by Lester. He got a hold there, kept going, and once he got to a certain point, he was knew he was going to the end zone. That's his second touchdown on the day. Really great drive by uh, Lester. And I don't know that Carter Lester was even touched as he went through the middle of that defense. Nice job as he went through, and you saw the speed and kind of the acceleration that the Thunderbird faithful are excited about. So Brevin Stolle out as he is, lines up another extra point try. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. 49-0, LCC on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome 
Welcome back. Today's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Also like to thank tonight's touchdown sponsor, Ricker Lawn and Landscape. Contact Ricker Lawn and Landscape for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, installation, and more. LCC kicked off to begin this half, but we've seen that short kick all afternoon long, and they did it again. This time they're able to recover, and LCC going to kick this one deep. Milmai going to take this one, works through the middle of the field, has to dodge his own teammate, and that slowed him up just enough for LCC to get to him, and they're going to drop him at the 30-yard line. Yep, Milmai, that's got to the 30-yard line there, like you said, and I think that's about where they've been starting all day. So, again, I, I keep saying it, but let's see if Jefferson can get something going here. So, Delphus Jefferson comes out for – it is their first offensive possession here of this half as they were – Supposed to start the half with the football, but uh, right. a, a good play by LCC kind of negated that. Yeah, I did notice a wide receiver for LCC, EJ Jones, hopping off on one foot there, so hopefully he's okay as well. Brody going to go to the air here to start the half, lobs this one up, and just out of the reach of Jace Lindemann, almost taken uh, for an interception by Mylon Cowan. Yeah, that one was dangerous. Could have been intercepted, but, I mean, Luke Rohde, he's really just trying to do whatever he can back there. Really is not getting a lot of time, and, man, he, he's really trying his best, so give props to the guy. Second and ten for the Wildcats. See Jace Lindemann, one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. Three wide receivers on the near sideline. Rohde going to roll to his side, and Lindemann not able to hold on to the football. I think he took his eyes off of that one as he was trying to turn up field. It might have been just a tad behind him as well, but still catchable for sure. That's going to bring up third and ten for the Wildcats. Seven minutes left to go here in the third. And if you're Delphus Jefferson, you know, things have not gone well. It's been a rough afternoon. I mean, there's really no kind of sugarcoating that. But there's still a lot that you can work on. This is still a young team with a first-year head coach. They're still getting used to each other, working on different schemes. You know, this isn't a lost game as this one's going to go deep. Lindemann hat was uh, hand-fighting there with Mylon Cowens. As for a second, looked like he had a step, but unable to track that one down. It's going to bring up fourth down, and the Wildcats are going to punt. You know, but Kelsey, they just there are things that you can still work on. There's still time here. You know, this isn't a lost game. Yeah, maybe, you know, a, a victory is out of reach at this point, but there's still things that you can do to get yourself better as there's still three games left in this season. Absolutely, yeah. There's still a lot of good Adelphus Jefferson can do here. If, if I'm coach, I'm telling them, keep positive. Let's keep going out there and working and, and get ready for these next three games because the next three games they have coming up, Allen East, Fort Laramie, and Spencer Roll, those are all three and three teams. So those are teams that they could comp compete with, absolutely. So a 15-yard punt goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That's where LCC will take over. You know, and I don't know if anybody knows you, Kelsey, no one's surprised at your advice. So one more tell them to keep positive. Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. Know, they, they don't call you the princess of positivity for nothing. Yep, it's stuck for a reason. <laughs> that's so funny. Miles called me at that on the radio show one day, and now it's just, that's what everybody knows me by. <laughs> Six minutes left to go here in the third quarter. LCC taking over. And we see Brady Jacobs coming into the game for LCC as – you got to imagine Brady Parker's day is over. Jacob's going to pull this one down, works up the middle of the field. He's going to get taken down after a short game. As a couple of helmets got stuck together, oh, yeah. Millmine has an LCC helmet stuck in his face mask. <laughs> so we're going to have to take a timeout as they work that out. Oh, never mind. The, the officials got that undone pretty quickly. As that was uh, Louis Knott's. <laughs> <laughs> now, you don't see that very often, but after those two came together, uh, Nance's helmet got tangled up, and we had to stop play there for at least for a moment. But. Yeah, I can't say I've ever seen that one before. <laughs> Second down and eight for the Thunderbirds. Brady Jacobs getting some... Um, getting some more snaps. We saw him in the first half when Brady Parker went out with he an did. injury for a little bit. But Jacobs 
doing um, getting some meaningful snaps here as Carter Lester takes this one. He dances up around to the 40-yard line. You know, th these these are all really big learning moments for this young LCC team. Coach Palti getting a chance to, to get his guys out there. You know, it, it, it's football. You never know when your number is going to get called. And if you can get out here, take some meaningful snaps, Coach Palti can see what he has in some of these guys. It, it at least makes you feel a little bit better as you move through the season. You obviously never want to see any of your starters go down, but at least in the back of your mind knowing, hey, these guys have played some football. You know, we feel comfortable out there with them, and, and it wouldn't be such kind of a deer in headlight situation if they get thrown into a game later this season. Absolutely. Yeah, give them a little bit of experience when they can. Here's Michael Quatman. He's had a great day defensively. Going to add some offensive numbers to his stat line as he picks up a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, a first down. First down sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphas, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Yeah, there was that motion that we see LCC run so much, and it works for him. Michael Quatman's really excelled at that today. He gets on that right end, has been able to find a good amount of yardage. So LCC driving yet again. Clock continuing to run here at Spartan Stadium on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Jacobs going to keep this one himself. Works off that left side. Had a hole. It did close quickly as he picked up only about two or three yards on that game. Yeah, Nate, this is an LCC team I've been lucky to see a lot this season, and I just think they've been getting better and better throughout. I mean, like, they started out the season with a loss against Shawnee, had four wins in a row. They lost last week against a really good Bluffton team, but, wow, I think Brady Parker, although he's not playing now, he's really stepping into his role. They're figuring things out, and I think that they're a pretty good team to be reckoned with against any team, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of what this LCC team is made of when they play Columbus Grove yeah. here in, in a couple of weeks is um, – you know, that game against Bluffton, it, it it's hard to really get a read on what LCC can do. I mean, you hate to, to say that one player can make a difference, especially right. in a game that was that, laps, la, that lopsided. But Matthew Quatman is that kind of player. Yeah. He wasn't able to do the things that make him dangerous. And when you take him out of that offense and you make it more one-dimensional, Bluffton's able to adjust. And they're a phenomenal de defensive team. I mean, they gave up only four points a game. Right. That, that, and then you take away your focal point of the offense, it really changes things. And it was also, you know, a horrible night weather-wise. Oh, yeah. It was also really weird. The lights kept going out because of the storm. Yeah. There's just a lot going on. So I think that it is... It, obviously, Bluffton is a great team, but I think that it's difficult to look at LCC and be like, oh, they're that far behind maybe where yeah. Bluffton is. And we're going to find out when they f when they face Columbus Grove. Yeah, that's a game I'm really excited to see. And like you said, in that Bluffton game, there's a lot of variables. The weather was awful, and that would have been a perfect time to have Matthew Quatman in the game running. I know he was limited there. So, yeah, a, a lot to look forward uh, for them, and I'm definitely excited to see that Columbus Grove game in a couple of weeks. So the LCC offense continues to move down the field. They've picked up another Lingy's Famous Recipe Chicken. First down. Jacobs in the backfield. Waits on the snap alongside Carter Lester. Going to hand it off to Lester. Lester does a nice job move, moving east and west as he's able to kind of bounce in and out. And then before he puts his foot in the ground and accelerates forward, as he creates some space, gets inside the 10-yard line. LCC inside the thermal guard window and door. Red zone yet again. And they are looking to put another one in for six. Yeah, and I love the effort that freshman Carter Lester has given in the running back position because a couple times here he's run straight into a big pile, but he doesn't give up. He pushes and pushes, and sometimes he's been able to grab a couple extra yards. So really great effort by the freshman there. Under a minute left to go here in the quarter. Quatman in motion. Jacob's going to pull it down as he is going to get tackled after a gain of about one. So a little surprised he didn't let that one go unless the play call was for him to keep it the whole time because Quatman looked like he had a, had a, a nice little lane and that nice head of steam as well. But that motion has been working really good here this afternoon for LCC. Really well, yeah. Like you said, a lot of times when he gets on the outside, he has room. Final 25 seconds here of the quarter. This will be the last play. Before we head to the fourth, Jacobs takes the snap. Going to hand this one off to Lester. Lester works off the right side, trying to find the edge, and he gets into the end zone. 
And that is another Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown for the Thunderbirds. Touchdown number three on the day. And actually, oh. we have some laundry on the field. There's going to be a hold against LCC, so that is going to bring that one back. And they immediately make a liar out of me as we are going to have a, <laughs> another play, I believe. Actually, I don't believe it will because because of the running clock, as soon as the ball is set, that should click off the final two seconds here of the third quarter. Okay. But Lester looked really good there, didn't he? I mean, he has some size to him, but I, I'd be scared to be standing when he's coming at full steam. Yeah, he runs – you know, his, his speed is deceptive. Yeah. He may not be the fastest guy on the field, right. but he does have speed. But the way that he is able to move east and west and, and get guys leaning, and he's also not easy to take down, he will break a lot of tackles. You know, it is a great combination, him and uh, Eddie White, and then obviously Matthew Quatman and everything that he does, and just phenomenal in that backfield. A, a lot of talent in the backfield for LCC. Absolutely. So we're going to have an untimed down here as the quarter cannot end on a penalty. Lester going to go to the other, other side this time. Looking for a block. Makes a man miss, and he gets his touchdown back. The hold called back the last time he made it into the end zone, but this time he had to go a little bit farther, but it's the same result as LCC has a Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdown. Wow, that was impressive, Nate. Yeah, he said, take away my touchdown, put me back a couple yards, doesn't matter. I'm getting back there anyways. What a great run by Carter Lester there. Wow, that was really good. Ricker Lawn and Landscape, contact them for all your lawn care needs, including fertilization and weed control programs, aerating, hydro seeding, irrigation service, installation, and more. As LCC continues to rack up the Ricker Lawn and Landscape touchdowns, Revan Stolle out for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. That brings the third quarter to a close. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Also, like to thank our Red Zone sponsor, Thermal Guard Window and Door. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermalguardwindows.com or call 419 229 4273 for your free estimate. Chase Lindemann, he tries to return this one, but the Thunderbird. Defense right there to take him down quickly. I think was that Javante Davis on the tackle? I, I wasn't sure, able to grab the number on that one. But I feel like I just need to talk about Brevin Stolle again. I mean, when you're in high school, extra points are a for sure thing like you would think so in college and uh, the pros. And he's eight on eight for the day. He's been doing really good in the kickoffs. He had a pooch kick that they were able to recover. He's doing a fantastic job for his first game in the kicking position. See some backups coming into the game for LCC on this defensive side of things. On that defensive line, you see number 77, Brady Garlock. Carter Lester in at linebacker, so is Eddie White. So Coach Palti trying to get some guys in. Aiden McCain is in at DB as well. As they have some success getting back there as well. Rody though, going to look to run with his feet, and he is tracked down. As Carter Lester covered a whole lot of that ground to get to him to limit that gain to just a few yards. Yeah, and that was a good job by Rody there because they had him in the backfield like he, they've had so many times in this game today. But he did a good job scrambling, ran out the other way, and was at least able to grab a couple yards out of that. Let's see, see if I can grab a couple more numbers of some of the guys in now. Looks like sophomore Javante Davis is in the in. in. Jackson White in on defense. Kay Dayhill back in the secondary for LCC as Lindemann right now struggling as he once again looked like he took his eyes off of that one as he was trying to turn up field. Yep, I think you're right there. He, The ball was right in his chest. I think he was just getting a little bit too excited thinking about what he's going to do next. I think that was the second one of the day doing that. So unfortunate, but hopefully he can focus a little bit and grab one of these in. See, I believe I see Khalil Simpson, number 10, in for LCC. Brady Jacobs is in on defense as well. So 
Coach Palti really trying to uh, see what he has out of some of these guys, getting them some minutes here towards the end of this one. Rody going to drop back, sets up the screen. This is Dean Trentman as he tries to get out near the first down marker. It's going to bring up fourth and short. So what do you think they do here, Nate? I mean, they're far back in their own side of the field, but, I mean, at this point, do you just – Yeah, you go for it. Yeah. Here. I mean, yeah, really, what do you have to lose? Right. I mean, even if you, if you punt it, you know, it doesn't really do anything. Let's work on something. You never know when you need a – four. The, the way that I've always thought, if you're in a game like this and, and it's kind of gotten out of hand and, you know, you know victory's probably not coming anyway. Right. You never know when going forward into the season you're going to need a fourth and one play. Right. So let's dial that up here. Let's see if we can get that work. Let's build some confidence in a fourth and one play. And the count right there brought them off sides. They get a free first down. So Delphus Jefferson with a free set or a new set of downs after another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Absolutely, yeah. Work out for him there, right? Eight fifty and counting here in the fourth quarter. Toss this one over to Tretman. Tretman looking for some blockers, and Javante Davis just comes out of nowhere as he flew through there, made contact with Trenton, and drove him back. About five yards. Devontae Davis, wow, what a tackle. Sophomore, 5'8", 168. I mean, we've been talking all day about LCC going down their depth chart. But, wow, I haven't seen anyone look bad. They all look really good. Yeah, this second unit coming in for LCC is picking up right where the first unit left off. They sure are. Brody takes the snap, going to go to the air quickly. Gets this over to Shade. Shade trying to work through, makes his way upfield, gets across the 40-yard line before he's taken down. That'll make it third and about seven. Yep, Shade did a good job with what he had there. Was able to grab a couple more yards, juke a couple of defenders. He has six receptions, 35 yards on the season. So, I mean, at this point for Jefferson, I think you're happy with these little pickups, right? At least you're having some sort of drive down the field. Yeah, I mean, for sure. and like I said, you're, you're we're just you're looking for some successes, some things that you can take away, yep. and say, hey, look, th these are things that we can rely on moving forward. Rody gonna go to the air, gets rid of it quickly, and you know when Jefferson has done those quick reads and not like maybe the two or three step drop or not tried to do things, and they've tried to speed things up, they've had some success. The no huddle has worked well for them. Getting the ball quickly out uh, for short gains has worked for the most part for the Wildcats. So there are some things that they're going to be able to look at on film and be like, hey, those those are things that we need to keep in mind, you know, in, in the last three weeks of the season. Absolutely. And Jace Lindemann with a the reception there, good job for him. He's been doing a really good job of getting open. He's had a lot of targets today. See Nelson Miller into the game for the Wildcats Ooh. as Jace Lindemann had to go up to get that one had that one go off of his hands, almost caught it on the rebound, but that one bounced to the ground incomplete. Yeah, that one was a little awkward, thrown just a tad bit high. He about pulled it in anyways, but yeah, that one was a little bit awkward, unfortunately. He couldn't pull it in. So you see some new players coming in for the Wildcats as well. Coach Pullman going to his bench to get some guys some time. Going to be second and 10 for the Wildcats. Going to go to the air yet again, looking for Lindemann. A nice job that time as I believe that might be, is that J.J. Snyder's maybe? I know, it was Brady Jacobs it was. out there as he got up and just knocked that one down to the turf. Yeah, Brady Jacobs did a really good job there. He just kind of sat and waited, watched the quarterback, because the receiver looked to be wide open, but he didn't know. Brady Jacobs was just waiting there. He got a hand on that one. Could have very easily been an interception. So that brings up another third down for Delphus Jefferson. Carter Sherrick going out to the far side for the one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's in shade and motion. Rody going to roll, going to throw back. They're trying to set the screen up to shade as LCC's defensive front got there quickly. I believe that was Brady Garlock, the closest defender to Rody. 
As that one is going to be off target, going to fall incomplete, and the Wildcats will punt this one away. Five minutes left to go. LCC on top, 56 to nothing. Looks like LCC is maybe going to let this one go, or they're just keeping an eye out for the fake. Yeah, they don't put anybody back. This one's just going to bounce around. We'll see where the Wildcats want to down it, and it's going to be at the 19-yard line. Yeah, I think the punter was a little bit upset there because he thought it could have bounced a couple more yards, but they grabbed it anyways. Yeah, I think that actually was probably a, a good call. From where the punter was, I'm sure yeah. it looked that way. But from right. up here, look, that one was definitely going to start taking a Thunderbird bounce if they wouldn't have downed it where they did. Yep, I agree with you. So now LCC, they're going to send the second unit out on offense as well. We'll see what they want to stick with. Carter Lester will be out there at running back. And I believe we're going to have a – nope, Brady Jacobs is out there. I, I didn't see him initially, but he'll still be out there at cornerback. Yeah, that's press room Brady Jacobs. He's been doing a good job filling in on the offense, and he's had a couple of really good plays on defense as well. And I don't think that they've let Brady throw the ball yet. I don't know I that don't they'll let so. – I don't know that they'll change that now either. As this one's going to be handed off for a run. And get that into the hands of Aiden McCain. As McCain gets that one up. Uh, let's see where they're going to mark him down at. It looks like they're going to get him down at the 24-yard line. It's going to be just short of a first down. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if they let Jacobs uh, throw a ball here. But, I mean, the running's yeah, been working. The yeah, clock's going. Yeah, with the difference that it, that it is here, I, I don't think you – uh, I don't think Palti's going to put this one in the air. Yeah, there's really no need to, right? Exactly. Oh. Jacobs handles uh, or has trouble handling that uh, that exchange with the center on the shotgun snap. Able to gather it back up, though. He moves forward, and that will be another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. I think that's about as lucky as you can get with a, uh, a – pretty much the ball bounced down right back up into his arms, yep. and he was able to run through. So – Got lucky with that, and uh, he made the best that he could out of it. Clock continues to run here. There's about three minutes left in the game. See Rocco Cicala Wells. He is out wide. Gonna hand this one off to McCain, though, who came in motion, and he is going to get dropped for a loss. That was a great tackle there. I want to say, I don't know if that's Jackson Buzzard. His jersey's a bit scrunched up there. Looks like number seven, but really good tackle there. Going to bring up second and 11 for the Thunderbirds. So if you're LCC coming off of that loss from Bluffton, Kelsey, you know, this is, you got to consider this a get right week, a get right mm -hmm. game, you know, Things kind of get ramped up in practice after a loss, especially one in which you're shut off, shut out, and you lose to you know a, a team where I think a lot of people thought coming into this season and as the season has moved on, you know the conference was going to come down to one of three teams, which yeah. is Bluffton, Columbus Grove, or LCC. Yeah, you're still in that hunt just with the one loss. Mm -hmm. You you need to beat Columbus Grove in a few weeks. And then, you know, Columbus Grove and Bluffton still have to play. They'll, they'll meet in week 10. Yep. So there's still an opportunity for a conference championship. But, you know, you're also looking towards the postseason, and, and you know the the amount of great teams in Division 7 that you may have to face. Mm -hmm. So there's there's still a lot that LCC is trying to get themselves ready for. You know, you, they have a, a young quarterback. They have a, a running back who is probably one of the best in the state when healthy. I there's agree. a there's a lot of good things going on for LCC, and you got to think that they're feeling a whole lot better, a whole lot better about themselves leaving this game than they did leaving last week, obviously. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, for the starters who played initially, they had a great showing. You're showing that you have a lot of depth here that's playing really well. Yeah, th this is all positive for LCC going forward. And like I said or earlier. As the season has gone on for LCC, I think they're just getting better and better. They're getting more confident. They're getting used to these new players, some young players, and they're doing a really good job. So I'm impressed by the, the Thunderbirds every time I see them. 
So LCC is punting for the first time tonight with 50 seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter as Brady Parker is out for the punt. Gets this one away cleanly. As fair catch is, and that is just kind of the story of the game for yeah. Delphus Jefferson, unfortunately. Millmine was there. He waved for the fair catch, and then it bounces right off of his jersey. And then not even an opportunity for them to, uh, for Delphus Jefferson to get it back as it fell right into the hands of, I believe, that was uh, Michael Quatman. Yeah, that was just unlucky. Like I said earlier, with the snap for LCC, they got lucky. It bounced right back up into his hands. Well, this was unfortunate, man. He caught it, bounced right out of his arms, and the LCC player was just right there. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. It's just right place, right time. Yeah, and that is going to wrap it up here as LCC is just going to let this one run uh, run out. The final 10 seconds are coming off of the clock. They're getting to the 50 so they can start shaking hands. You know, Kelsey, I, I, I don't know that coming in everybody thought that this would necessarily be um, a, a close game. Yeah. But I am kind of surprised in the way that LCC was able to run away so quickly from this Wildcat team. Yeah, I agree with you. Like you said, uh, we kind of uh, everyone had a thought about the LCC might take this one. But I like what you said earlier about LCC. They came off that loss against Bluffton last week. They came back and really put their all into it and everything. They looked really good. I would love to see Jefferson do that again next week. They have um, Alan East. They're 3-3. Three and three They go against next week. Take this loss. See what you did. See what you did good. See what you did bad. Let's put that into practice and go have a good game against Alan East next week. So that's going to about, just about wrap it up for us here at Spartan Stadium. We'd like to thank our sponsors one final time. Ultimate Outdoor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Ricker Lawn and Landscape, Thermal Guard Window and Door, and Metzger Financial Services. We appreciate you. also like to thank our crew today, Jacob working the camera, setting everything up. He does all the hard work. All the guys working behind the scenes, they do all the stuff. Kelsey, you know this better than even I do. I do. You guys do all of these things. We get to do the fun part. We get to come. We get to sit, watch sports, talk about it. That's that's the easy stuff. The hard work is done behind the scenes, and we appreciate them as always. Absolutely. One final time from Spartan Stadium. LCC knocks off Delphus Jefferson 56 to nothing. Kelsey Beimer, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.